is Uber CEO Darakar Shahi trying to execute more control over Uber as a company? Or is the COO and CMO leaving the company a sign that Uber is a sinking ship and they are fleeing like rats from that sinking ship? Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. Now before we get into this video, I do want to address another topic that I'm sure is on many of your minds. I want to address this topic because I'm sure you saw my three videos, which is this one, the Uber Freight, and the Barnes & Noble being sold videos. And you're probably looking at those videos and wondering, Kevin, isn't there something you're forgetting to talk about? Like a situation with a 12-year-old girl that's very important? Where's that video? Here's the thing, folks. I agree. That is probably by far the most important topic today, which is why I'm going to briefly touch upon it here. I have been reading about it, and I've been reading other people's opinions about it. I've been listening to their opinions, and I have decided, because of the sensitive nature of the topic, that that was going to be the main topic for the live stream tonight. I will be sharing my opinion on it. I, I definitely have thoughts on it. However, this is a, such a nuanced and complicated situation, such nuanced and complicated, that... I think it invites an open discussion after sharing the opinions because I do generally want to hear from you guys what you think about it, see if I'm kind of on the right track. I want to see if I'm on the right track and I don't want to make some something that is where I am not, as they say, really thinking about this. I, I definitely have opinions on it. I will share it tonight. That's definitely going to happen. However, I, I want you guys to be there. And I want to discuss it. And so tonight, that's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, however, we will take a moment to talk about the other important topic today, which might not be as serious as what happened with that family, unfortunately. However, this could potentially have huge ramifications for Uber. And that is that Uber's chief operating officer and chief marketing officer are stepping down very shortly after the IPO. Now, on... Part of, for part of me, this is a surprise, and yet it really isn't a surprise. I mean, I have been very, I guess, bearish is the term on Uber. A year ago, I said this company was going to go out of business within two years. I no longer believe that. However, they will go out of business. It's inevitable. They don't have a working business model. They don't have a way to make money and keep it. The relationship with the drivers is frayed. I think the more people realize about the pay discrepancies between passenger and driver, the more customers will wrongfully, by the way, perceive that Uber is price gouging them and go to Lyft. Lyft does pretty much the same thing. However, Uber is getting the main flack for that right now. They, they have a foundation built on sand. And you know what the Bible said. It even came with a little cool little Sunday school verse about the wise man building his house upon the rock and the foolish man building his house upon the sand. And Uber has been the fool over and over and over again, and it will eventually bite them. And one of the reasons I suspected that there was a big push to make Uber public when they had no ways to prove to Wall Street that they were going to be profitable anytime soon is because of executives inside the company. I believe ex executives were looking at the numbers, and for a long time, heavy, heavy growth. Then the couple quarters, growth slows significantly. They are still hemorrhaging money, and they probably realize we are at the peak of our success. Go public so we can cash out and get the heck out of here. And that's pretty much what's been happening. The first CEO, Ryan Graves, left like the company a week after Uber went public. And a investor in Lyft, who owned 2.57% of the stock or something like that, he sold the stock before it even hit the market. Didn't trust the stock to do, go anywhere. You're seeing the executives cashing out and leaving, and that suggests these companies are sinking ships. So enjoy them all you can, by the way. And we have here the main letter from Dar Karshahi about what happened, and we're going to read it. I think there are some nuggets of truth in his letter. I, I don't know for sure which aspects he's being completely honest about and which ones he's not being honest about. I don't work for Uber, obviously. I'm just saying that from my experience with the company, I think I'm going to make an educated guess about what I think is a lie and what's true. So here's what the email says. 
And let's go back a little bit back up. It's a long one, by the way. Team Uber. Over the years, I've learned that at every critical milestone, it's important to step back and think about how best to organize for the future. Given what we're that we're a month past the IPO, now is one of those times, and I've been discussing this topic a lot with Barney and the leadership team. We've made so much progress over the last two years, and Uber is in a far better spot, both internally and externally. And by the way, I, I will agree with this. <laughs> I will agree with this. You know, they're public. They just got a huge influx of cash. They can operate a few more years before they go bankrupt. And drivers, for the most part, haven't actually fled en masse. Yeah, you've got the strikes and the protests, but they're not doing as much as I would hope they they do, and they need to grow more before they will, although I still support them. Still totally support them. So yes, I actually do believe Uber's in a better place than they were two years ago. I now have the ability to be even more involved in the day-to-day -day operations of our biggest businesses, the core platforms of Rides and Eats, and have decided they should report directly to me. This will allow me to be more hands-on and help our leaders problem-solve in real time, while also ensuring that we make our platform vision a reality. Now, what he's saying here, in my opinion, is that Dara is being given a bonus, a very generous bonus by Uber, if when he took the company public, he could keep the value of the company above $120 million. Well, it is far from that. And Dara, who, by the way, did turn Expedia around and turned Expedia into one of the biggest sites on the internet, I think he wants to try to work his magic again to get that bonus. And so that's what I believe is what he's really talking about here. I don't think he was unhappy with the COO or the CMO. He just, he wants that bonus. And this was a method he used that worked with Expedia. So he wants to try to see if it will work with Uber. And who knows, maybe it will. Maybe it will. Like Dar is not a stupid man. I mean, he totally lacks common sense, but he's not stupid. He wouldn't be where he is if he was. So that's what I think is going on here. Given this, Barney and I have agreed that the COO role no longer makes sense and he's decided to leave Uber. I don't believe Barney agreed that the COO role was. No one actually voluntarily says, yeah, I don't really need this job unless Barney is one of the people who got the stock options and maybe he did agree and it's like the conversation is really, yeah, I don't think this company is going to survive so I want to leave and then I'm going to cash out as soon as I can. Barney is a talented business person, and I can't thank him enough for all of his contributions in helping us get to and through the IPO. Under his leadership, we've increased our focus on engagement with the launch of our rider and driver loyalty program, improve the customer experience by eliminating tens of millions of defects through Contact Less 100. I'm going to have to look that up to find out what that is exactly. And strengthen the critical partnership between our product, tech, and business teams. On a personal level, I've appreciated his strategic mind, analytical chops, and unflagging passion and efforts for our mission. Barney will be around until July 1st to help me with the transition. With his change to the COO role, I have decided to make a few additional changes. Now, here's the interesting part of that email. I decided to make a few additional changes. Now, the other thing, I, I will give some benefit of the doubt. He probably has a better relationship with Barney. They kind of look like they'd be two guys that would go out with a drink. The CMO, on the other hand, I, and I don't want to, I don't want to pull this card. I really don't. But, well, she's a woman, to be frank, and I don't think Dara and her have the same camaraderie that he might have with Barney. Although I don't think Barney was completely happy about leaving I, either. However, he might have more of a say. So Dara, who wants to execute this vision, is getting rid of her. However, it's pretty clear that he can't honestly say me and Rebecca have agreed to part terms mutually. She probably doesn't agree. And because she doesn't agree, that is what is necessitating this little line of dialogue with this change to COO role. I have decided to make a few additional changes so that he can basically clear her of having to lie and say I had something to do with the decision when she really didn't. Mac, one of our most tenured and talented leaders, will take on the global Rides business reporting to me. Reporting to Mac will be Pierre, Troy, Gus, Ronnie, and Mike, all first name basis. So, you know, you're going to have to Google search to find out who they are. Pierre will now head up international rides, adding LATAM to his scope in addition to EMEA and APAC with Gord George Gordon reporting to him. Safraz Maradia, who will take on US and Canada rides, will continue reporting to Mac and Brooks and Twistle 
will take the interim leadership to the ride's business development. Okay, so this is just restructuring right now. Jason Eats team will now also report directly to me. Again, this is leading up to what I believe Dara wanting to definitely execute his vision the way he turned Expedia around. He wants to try to do it with Uber, and he wants more control. That's why this is all happening. And Xenia Lindgarden, who recently joined Uber from Boston Count Consulting Group, will report to me and take on a new platform strategy and customer engagement role, focus on making sure we optimize our platform to realize its full growth potential and drive customer engagement across all of our products. Finally, it's increasingly clear that it's crucial for us to have a consistent, unified narrative to consumers, partners, the press, and policymakers. So I've decided to combine our marketing communications and policy teams into one led by Jill. Given this, Rebecca and I have agreed it makes sense for her to move on. In Rebecca's time here, she stood up she stood up our first global marketing organization and helped showcase the best aspects of our brand during her IPO. I'm so grateful for her energy and enthusiasm over the past nine months, and I wish her all the best. Given, the, given that marketing is so important to our business and our brand continues to be challenged, I have also decided to unify all marketers across performance, product, rides, eats, safety, ATG, Fright, Nemo, and employer brand globally under Jill. Now, here's what's confusing to me. I believe Rebecca has been around the company a lot more than Jill. And since she was the face of the company for so long, and by the way, a lot of people said very nice things about Rebecca. Rebecca was one of the few Uber people that worked there that I'd never heard a bad thing about. Like, she seemed genuinely nice and concerned, and if she didn't care for you, she certainly didn't seem to show it. So the fact that he would replace her with Jill, who, as he points out here, joined nearly four years ago, that's just strange. I definitely think this was not completely am amicable. Or maybe it was. Again... I suspect uh, Rebecca and Barney are probably seeing the writing on the wall. The IPO is not going to recover the way they hope. I mean, it did get most of its share value back. It's dipped, of course, again since this news. It'll probably go up to, I'd say, about $100 at one point, but it's. I would be a little surprised if it got a whole lot higher than that. So, anyway, Jill has been instrumental in addressing some of our toughest challenges as a company. She's an excellent team builder and always committed to doing what's best for Uber. In order for Jill to dedicate more of her time to marketing, she has asked two proven leaders to step up. Matt will lead the global communications and Justin will lead global policy, both reporting to Jill. There's never really a right time to announce departures or changes like this, but with the IPO behind us, I feel this was a good moment to simplify our org and set us up for the future. As always, I'll be at the All Hands on Tuesday from our DC office to answer your questions. Until then, I ask that you support the leaders who have helped, who have stepped up for the company and keep your foot on the gas. No one who has a high position drives through. I get what he's trying to do. Uber on Dara. So, there's the letter. And again, this is all very highly suspicious. I do think it's a combination of a lot of factors. I think Barney and Rebecca... I think they see that it's a sinking ship. They probably express some concerns. Dara might want full loyalty and he's getting rid of them. Or maybe they're leaving because they don't trust the company and Dara might have no choice but to take over. It's it's all very confusing what this could mean. mean. I know we will find out within a few months because if it is that dysfunctional, here's the thing. If it's as dysfunctional as I think it is, we will be hearing about it at some point. And if it's not, if this is really as smooth as you could want it to be, then we won't hear much at all. However, with Uber... If I was a betting man, I typically will bet against Uber because they have done so much wrong. Frankly, there's not a whole lot where they can go except down. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, what do you folks think? Do you agree, disagree? I'd love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices are getting you a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. Also, subscribe to the Aptrapreneur Vlogs channel if you have a chance. And if you want to talk to me or other fellow rideshare people, check us out at the Aptrapreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, blame responsibly. Have a good one.